Ooh, is it going to balance? There we go. Okay. So um, the first question is, can you show us an up close of Teddy's dummy and explain what it is? So I'm not sure if it's actually featured on YouTube much, but Teddy has like a comfort toy that he's had since he was a puppy. It's the toy that he selected, which was a ratty old puppy husky Teddy that somebody bought me um, when I got my job in India for, at the time I just had Phil and Nico, it was about eight years ago I started that job and I had to travel uh, quite a lot to India. So my old job got me this teddy, at the time it was very cute and very white and clean, um, to take with me um, on my travels so that I felt like home away from home. So it's a very old teddy um, and the real teddy selected it as his like dummy. So he carries it around with him everywhere he goes um, and it's now disgusting. It has no eyes, no head really and it's filthy but you can't wash it because it's his teddy, it kind of stays outside anyway. But he just takes it around the garden with me, takes it everywhere he goes. Right now he's taking it onto my clean bed in for this video purpose. Um, but that is like his, I call it like his dummy. He's a baby and that's his his comfort toy. Um, it's his favourite thing in the whole wide world. It's gross, but it's cute at the same time. Especially when he's like jumping up to see the neighbours and he's got it in his mouth. Like there's no way a dog could look aggressive holding a baby dog in their mouth. Like, well, I suppose there is, but not in the context of which my dogs do it. So that is his dummy, and I'm sure that'll be around for many years to come. Um, how's the house hunting going? Better than the last update I did. I'm, I've got my motivation back. I've got my mojo back. We had about four houses lined up. My favourite one, I'd even contacted local primary schools and stuff. I was that confident that I was going to want to put an offer in. And um, then the day before we were going to view it, they called us up to say it had already sold and they're not accepting any more viewings unless the offers fall through because they had two offers on the property. That one had been up for two weeks. So that was disheartening, um, especially since I've been talking to the head teacher of the primary school in the area and stuff. Like I'd really got my hopes up for that one. Um, I think the problem we have is we like to go and see houses on a Friday when we're not working, but Mia's in nursery. Um, and because we have to wait, so say we see one on the Saturday or Sunday of the weekend before, we can't go and see it then until the Friday, by which point it's already sold. Um, so yes, yeah, so that one's disheartening, but there's another one I'm really excited about, which is in Chester. Uh, and we're due to go see that if it doesn't sell next Friday. Um, and we'll see how that one goes. But the weird thing about that one, it comes with three acres, it's beautiful. Um, it does need a bit of modernisation, but doesn't, we don't really have much budget left for it with the price of it. Um, got a really good location near a primary school, haven't spoken to that one's head teacher yet, but it's a four bedrooms with four en suites. So each room has a shower and two of the showers are downstairs, which I just think is really odd. Next question is, who is Mia's favourite? Milo is hands down Mia's favourite. We've got a couple of videos coming up of Milo and Mia's relationship. They're very, very close to each other. Um, and then if not Milo, I think Teddy just because I'd say she's a bit more wary around Phil and Nico. Teddy, she would climb on top of, she would yank toys out of his mouth, things like that. Phil, she will feed, but she would like, she'd give Teddy food by hand, whereas Phil, she will put it in a bowl or chuck it on the floor. Hello, Neeks. Um, so yeah, Teddy is definitely Amelia's favorite. Is it required to have your pets microchipped in the UK? Um, it's not required, but most people I think do. Um, for example, my dogs, I think I'm a bit of a rare few, but my dogs don't wear collars. They don't have like an ID tag with their name and who to contact. They are all microchipped. Um, and I just think like my dogs aren't going to run away from, oh, look at that little tuft of hair I just got out. Um, my dogs aren't going to run away from me. They do come back. They might go and say hello to another dog and stuff, but they won't completely go from me. If they're gone, they're stolen. Um, a collar isn't going to help that. And then if for any reason they have managed to run away, which has never happened in the eight years that I've owned Phil and the seven years that I've owned Nico, other people, the first thing you do is take them to a vet. So all they need is a microchip. And I just don't like collars on dogs. I just think, no, you've got leads and you can have like the slip leads. Um, but then they can, if you've like me and you let your dogs off lead all the time, they can just be free and not have a constant collar, especially when you've got one with alopecia. Nico, you're pushing me over. When you've got one with alopecia, any collar is going to damage the fur. Uh, around it it'll just make him lose fur quicker so i just wouldn't put a collar on pill ever and i really wouldn't consider putting it on the other dogs but that's not a requirement they don't have to wear collars um and they don't have to be kept on lead i think i think i've read somewhere in the us that lots of places and it, in canada when i went there into um alberta uh which is like lake louise banff all of those places 
you had to keep your dogs on lead all the time. I literally, like, I would love to live there. I would love to live somewhere in the mountains, but I can't imagine living in a country where you have to keep your dogs on lead unless you're in, like, a designated dog park. Like, if you can't be out in nature with your dogs running free, that seems crazy to me. Um... think after all these years I'd have a better camera setup but I don't uh whatever works for you did you get a new camper van no we got just a basic panel van um that we are converting into our version of camper van um and the process has started we've done a video showing you the van and it will take a few months but this one was like half the price of the camp less than half the price of the camper van that we sold so hopefully we've saved a lot of money there is it better to feed a Malamute a raw diet as opposed to a normal dog diet I'm probably biased here because I don't feed raw. Um, I think if a dog's out in the wild, you can feed raw. I know raw is really good for them, but I also know that you can buy premium dog kibble that is just as good. And my personal preference is I would rather pay the same amount, or if not more, in kibble than in uh, raw feed. And I also don't have the freezer space to stock. The amount of raw food these dogs would need, I could only probably hold maybe a day or two's at most in my freezer so i would constantly be getting deliveries of raw food on top of the fact that i have children and i just don't want to be touching or having raw meat if it's not being eaten straight away it would be sitting in their dog bowl like it, i just it's not something i do so i feed a very premium brand of pet food um and they have wet and dry pet food and they all have different ones like for example teddy will be on puppy food until he's 18 months old so he's probably got about another year just under a year i've done it Phil is now in the senior category for dog food. So he's on a senior one for his joints. And Nico is still under a little bit of weight loss. So she's on a weight controlled uh, pet food at the moment, but they're all the same brand. Is Nico aggressive towards dogs other than her Phil and Teddy? Yes, that's why you often don't see her at dog meetups. Say hello to Nico. Um, she can be aggressive. If she's off lead, she isn't generally aggressive. It's more so when she's on lead. The problem you have is that it's like a double-edged sword. If you let her off lead and something happens and you know she can turn sometimes, then you're irresponsible. But if you keep her on lead all the time, you just know you're getting more of that behaviour because she's on lead, she's a bit more aggressive. So I don't let her off lead in general. I only let her off lead when I've got dogs I can trust. I know their behaviour and that I know their owners and they're aware of the situation. So it's like a the risk is on both of us almost. They're happy to risk it and they want to chance it. So the only people I do do that with is our friends Major the Manly Moot. Um, simply because Major is just like Phil. He is so laid back um, that I, I do trust. And also I know that Kaz and myself can split up the fight if, if anything does happen, which it has in the past, but they're very, it's all mouth with Manly Moots and they've got so much fur to actually do any damage to one another. It just wouldn't happen. So um, yeah, Major is the only one that I trust enough to let her off lead with and he's great with her. Is Teddy fully developed? No, he's not. He won't be fully developed until he's 18 months old and he won't be a year old until August, end of August. So he's got a while yet till he's fully developed. He is, I pretty much think he's almost at the size, where's he going? I think he's almost at the size that you can expect him to grow to now. He's just gonna chunk out a bit and maybe grow a little bit bigger. But I mean, he's already bigger than both of these. Um, so yeah, he will chunk up, but um, he's not, he's not gonna uh, reach full development until 18 months old. Um, can we get a view of the pet passports? I mean, you can, but they um, they don't exist anymore. They don't, they're expired. Um, and I have to be careful when I show them because it's got our address and stuff on there. But when we left the EU, pet passports don't exist. They're, they're for Europe people. Um, European, not Europe people, because we're still Europe. Um, yeah, pet passports for British people don't exist anymore. It's a vaccine certificate, I think it is now. Um, so we don't have to go through passports. So ours are redundant. They're expired, so... There's not much we can do there. I think you only need a pet passport now if you're part of the EU, um, which we are sadly no longer. So yeah, I need to get these vaccine certificates to be able to go abroad with them. But I just don't see the point with COVID at the moment. Who knows when we are actually gonna to get to travel again. Oh, loads of house hunting ones. How do you, do you train your Malamutes to be calm? Asking for my five month old Mally pup. <laughs> I'm sorry, The I'd say the four or five month to 
the two year mark is horrific. I'm not gonna lie, like Teddy is in that stage now. Destruction doesn't happen until about five months and you've got that until about 12 months old. Humping, if you can't get them neutered, is an issue. Like their behavior, they, they're amazing as babies and puppies. They are perfect. The, the destruction of it, it may be a little bitey, but that's probably as bad as it gets up until that five month mark. Then you get into the destruction phase. And then after that, you get into the, they'll run off and they won't come back because they're too interested in if they can find a female dog phase. Um, that's if you've got a boy. Girls are a little bit easier, I think. Um, but yeah, until your Malamute puppy reaches about two years old, they are an absolute nightmare. Um, the only thing I can say is it's worth it in the end because they do really mellow. They even mellow out when you get them neutered and spayed. And in the UK, I don't know if it happens in other countries, but in the UK, it's very much unless you are breeding, you will neuter or spay your dog and it's for their health. It's best for them. Um, so, yeah, that completely changes the male dog. I don't think I've really noticed any difference with Neeks when I neutered her, when I spayed her. But she was about three years old when I did her. And the reason I did her was because um, she had a phantom pregnancy. So her body tricked her into thinking she was pregnant. She was lactating and everything. Um, and she was not at all pregnant. There was no way she could be pregnant because Phil was already neutered long before. Um, but yeah, I got her done at a later stage and I should have got it done a lot earlier. Teddy, my plan is I'm not going to neuter him properly. You can get an implant, which you can either get in a six month dose or a 12 month dose because I would like to show him. And in order to show it like Crofts and all the big dog shows, you can't have them neutered. Um, I don't know why. I've not really looked into it to that level, but I know that I could never show Phil and I really want to try and take him to a few dog shows. I've never done it. I don't know if he's beautiful enough to win one I think he is but um my breeder Teddy Teddy's breeder is going to take me to a few and show me how to do it um and I'm kind of excited to do that and I'll, I'll show it on YouTube and you can see what it's like but I've never entered that world and I would think it'd be quite interesting to see some of the show dogs and see if Teddy could make it um but in order to do that he can't be neutered so I won't be doing that but I will be looking at a six month implant um so that you know throughout depending on what seasons dog shows are in the other season he will be um chemically castrated i think is the term uh and yeah it literally lasts the period of which the implant is in and it's like a microchip injection that you get done so yeah that's what i'll be doing but it is a lot more expensive i think the price is the same here to new to your dog permanently is the same as having an implant for six months nico you're falling off the bed sweetheart come on over you're sliding off come on this way come on baby there you go Okay, next question. Do you want another baby? We get asked this all the time. Um, no, if you asked me 18 months ago, definitely not. Um, my plan was always to only have one child. Just, I had a really bad labour. I had a really bad pregnancy. I don't want to go through it again, personally. And um, I love Mia with all my heart and she was completely worth it. But could I go through it again, knowing what I went through last time? I don't think so. However, saying that now that lockdown has lifted and you see her with other babies and you see baby talk and interactions and stuff it does it does make me broody but I don't think for me the fear of doing it again outweighs the um the broodiness I don't know I, the, I, the honest answer is I don't know Shane if you asked him he would say we should have done it already if we were going to do it because the age gap um my opinion is you don't get to comment on that unless you have to go through pregnancy and labour um but no honestly the idea that is like my biggest fear being pregnant not gonna lie being pregnant and giving birth and just in general pregnancy no i hate i wish i could say i was blessed i was blessed i wish i could say i enjoyed any part but i did not i didn't at all what do you think mia will be when she grows up if i could have any wish for it it'd be to be a bet um but Whatever she wants to be is fine with me. Whatever she wants to be, as long as she's happy. Who are Shane's parents? You never show them. Um, so you do kind of see them. So Ella is Shane's sister. Um, so she's often in the videos. Same as Harley. She is often in the videos. He's got another sister who uh, wouldn't want to be on camera, which is absolutely fine. That's up to them. His mum, I guess, also. She's been in some videos, but I think if you actually saw her or spotted her in the background of a video, she looks like his sister. Um, but yeah, she's not that keen on being on camera, but she is, she is in the background of quite a few, especially when Ella's around. Um, and then Shane's dad, you probably would have seen him in some of the Golden Retriever videos because that's his dog, uh, with Max. So they have been on camera. They just don't, we don't do like the grandma reunited videos with them because 
they live around the corner they're here every weekend or relatively often so it's not like this the dogs don't make a huge fuss when they see them because it hasn't been a month six weeks two months or even six months with lockdown um since they've seen them so they just don't you don't get them sort of dedicated videos are you planning on coming up with merchandise we already have it on our youtube if you just look below we've got some merchandise but that's about it we don't have any plans for any more honestly we just don't have the time um out of all the manly moots who is the hardest to control they are all different in terms of hardest to control so phil is the hardest to control on a lead in that he is so strong he can pull me over um if he wants to which he often does I don't like walking them on the lead for that reason, but at the same time when they're off lead, they'll just walk happily alongside me. So I'd say Phil is the hardest to control on lead. Off lead, Teddy is hardest to control because he just wants to run um, and he's got so much energy that I can't keep on top of because he's a puppy. And then in actual fact of Nico, where I say about dog aggression and how hard she can be sometimes to manage, in terms of being off lead, I have got her completely under control no matter what. Like as long as the, if she's alone, she's perfect and also in terms of if the other two dogs if they are all off lead for example and I see another dog come onto the pitch the first thing I'll do is put Nico on lead but she's actually the last dog that I would need to put on lead as long as the other two are under control Nico's not going anywhere she will always stay at my side so she's actually the most well behaved off lead dog but she's most difficult to control in terms of other dogs her not growling at another dog I'd say is difficult to control so they all have their own not bad points but you know difficulties it just depends on the dog. Um, how do you tell the difference between the dogs? They're so cute. Well, um, I feel like it's really easy, but obviously they're my pets. Phil is the hairless one, the beautiful bear with patches of hair missing. And he's also yellow in comparison to them. Nix is black. She's my female. She's the only black dog. And Teddy, he's the other one. That's how I think you can tell. Teddy is the one with the markings. He's got black eyes. The others have got white eyes or yellow and white but teddy's got all these like you know masks around his eyes so i think that's how you can tell them apart if you don't know them okay guys i think that is everything for the q a today i'm sure i've gone over the 10 minutes it's showing at 21 minutes here um but when i edit it down i'm hoping i can shave some time off where i've been scrolling trying to find the best ones um but i hope you enjoyed today's video if you do have any more questions just leave them in the comments below and we'll try and film another one next month Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you all soon. Bye.